Just like we do with dimensions, we deploy the project so that we can browse the results and check our work. When processing is completed successfully, we'll see a message to that effect in the deployment progress window. Now that we've successfully deployed this cube, let's browse it to check our results. To do that, with the Cube Designer open, we go to the Browser tab. And at this point, the browser is making a connection to the Analysis Services server. And on the left side, it's displaying the metadata about this particular database. We can see the cube as well as the measures. When we expand measures, we can see a folder for the measure groups and then each of the measures. Now remember, one of the measure properties was a display folder. So if we had configured display folders, they would appear beneath the measure group folder. We can add all of our measures at once to the cube browser just by dragging the measures folder into this area called drop totals or detail fields here. And just release the mouse and we can see each of our measures, order quantity, cost, and sales amount. And notice that we see the formatting as well. That's why I like to use the format string immediately so that I can read these values easily, particularly when the numbers are quite large. And then we can see each of our dimensions. Due date, order date, and ship date are each of our role-playing dimensions. If we expand order date, for example, we can see the hierarchy down at the bottom, indicated by the pyramid shape, as well as the individual attribute hierarchies. So if I take the calendar hierarchy and drag it onto rows, I can see the top level, the year, displayed. And then my measures each adjust accordingly to each year. And then the values that we did see in the browser now display in the grand total line. So if we were to do some validation of our cube, we could run a select statement against our factory seller sales table and do a sum of order quantity, a sum of cost, and a sum of sales amount to check that we get the right values. If we don't see the right values, then that probably indicates that we've done something incorrectly with our cube design or the dimension design. But assuming that all is correct, here with the calendar hierarchy displayed in the cube browser, we can now drill down, that is expand a particular year, to move from the year level down to the quarter level, and then from quarter down to month. Now remember, this was for order date. If I want to collapse everything, I can just close up the calendar year, but here in the browser it retains space for the quarter and month. And if you want to save some screen space, we can take month and just drag it to the left and take quarter and drag it to the left so that we can move the measures further to the left on our screen. I can take my calendar year hierarchy and move it to columns and that shifts the years to the top where I see each measure broken down by year. Just a slightly different view of the same information that we had before. That's called a pivot. And then I can choose a different dimension with a different hierarchy. So let's say that I take products and drop it onto rows. Now I can see sales by category by year. So for example, this 1003 for order quantity is the total sales in 2005 for accessories. I can expand accessories to see subcategories and I can see that that is a helmet and I can break that down into individual helmets with values for 2005. And then with 2005 I can break that down to quarter and then into individual months. So this is the slice and dice capability of our cubes and analysis services. Of course, our users will be using a different tool. This tool here, the browser within the Business Intelligence Development Studio environment, is strictly for developers to check their work. Users would use other tools such as Microsoft Excel or Reporting Services, among other tools, to access the information from the cube. Now within the browser, I'm not limited to placing a single dimension on rows or columns. We can do what's called nesting our dimensions. So for example, if I take category by itself, 
I do not have the capability to drill down, but let's say that I want to see categories broken down by country. I can just drag and drop that to the right of category, and now I can break accessories down by country and bikes down by country, etc. And so I can mix and match things as I need to to get precisely the information that I'm interested in. And then I have filter field. So let's say that I move color up into filter. This allows me to select a particular color, maybe blue, and click OK. And now my numbers are adjusted to show me only those products that are blue. And I can have as many different filters as I'd like here. When I want to reset everything, there's a button on the toolbar that clears the results, and I can start a new analysis. For example, if I want to see sales by employee, this is my parent-child dimension, where I can break down individual levels to see how much each salesperson has sold. Now, I don't have any time frame specified on rows or on columns or in the filter fields, so this represents sales for all time. But of course, if I want to see for a particular year, I could put year on columns or up in the filter fields and select for a particular point in time. So as we're building dimensions and measures for our cubes, we're always thinking about how people will interact with this information by putting data on rows, on columns, or in filters.